Hey guys, I'm Craig Moore, and I wanted to share a video with you from today, a horse I got in yesterday, and I w want to do an intro because it's a little bit of an interesting case, and uh, this horse came in and she is a four-year-old mare, and she is a bit of a spoiled horse, and so to me, spoiled horses can be one of the more difficult and dangerous horses because they've learned behaviors to get out of things they don't want to do and uh, they're very adamant on what they know with those behaviors so this is a spoiled horse that doesn't trailer load i also did a video today on fly spraying her but because of the trailer loading this is going to be so long we're not going to get to the fly spray today or i'm not going to share them all at once like i initially planned uh, my big thing, or our big thing here at More Horsemanship with trailer loading is pretty much they need to lead forward. When you take the slack out of the rope, they need to come with that. Um, this horse has learned to rear up and wheel around and get away. So this is going to be some pretty good footage. It's pretty raw. I normally do a lot more preparation. This is not a lot of preparation. This horse has not been through groundwork. This is straight up timing and feel, teaching that horse it needs to come forward even through the rough stuff. And this is what a lot of people deal with at home and that's why I want to share this because if I was just to go to someone's house and try to load their horse, this might be what it looks like because the horse doesn't have the tools or the foundation. So with that being said, we're going to jump right in. I'm going to do a voiceover and explain it. It was a windy day so you can't hear much but wind so I muted out the wind and I'm just going to do a voiceover and I hope you guys enjoy it. It's a little bit wild, more wild than most things I might share, but it's pretty real stuff and it's a good display of how quick a horse can come around. So we'll get right to it. So here's the start. We're just bringing her up, bringing her into the round pen. So this is simulating stepping up into the trailer. I've got a railroad tie, um, so I don't know, eight or 10 inches she steps up and then backing down. So we've already confirmed she can back on flat ground and lead forward. So that's why we're just stepping it up, doing it at this point. We haven't done a lot of work with her. We did go through our fly spraying already, but we haven't worked much on asking her to come forward. So we're using this whip and just asking her to come forward. And this is where she's using what she knows, which is if she doesn't want to come forward, she rears up and whirls and tries to run. So just present that whip, ask for forward. I'm pulling on that rope, and then when she comes forward, I'm trying to release. Obviously, right here, it's pretty rough. Oh, there I go. And she pulls away from, pulls me around right there, but I do get her nose back. And we'll see here, she does it again. And as I go to adjust that rope in my hand, I let it go. So I'm trying to get it back, and then I, yeah, I just kind of run it in there. I don't know why I was in a hurry, but anyways, I got the rope back here. and. All I'm working on is when I pick that rope up, she needs to come forward and she does it until she doesn't want to. And that's the spoiled part of this. It's like, she knows how to lead, but there comes a point when she doesn't feel like it and she just says no. So we're going to, going to go through quite a bit of that. Keep an eye on my pulling and releasing. So a lot of what you'll keep an eye on is that lead rope. You can see she's a little whip sensitive and that's not because I've used it because I haven't. This is more or less the first time she's seen it is what you're seeing here. I'm gonna guess somebody maybe has used a whip, but let's say they haven't, that's kind of irrelevant. This is just her response to what I'm asking. So then I'm just kind of moving her around here. Um, she does start to get a little pushy as she starts to figure out to come forward. She starts to think maybe I'll just run you over. So all these times I drop my whip, I have to go back and pick it up. And sometimes it gets a little bit of a response for her as I go to use it. And the reason I drop it is because I have to keep that nose turned to me. I pull and when she's back down, I try to give her a little release. It's pretty quick and sometimes it's hard to see, but I feel that communication through the lead rope. And there I give her a little more slack because she has to go under an archway into that pen. And if I pull while she's backing, I'm almost guaranteed I'm almost guaranteed she will rear up and I don't want her to hit her head. So my main deal here is keep that nose to me. And, and as she realizes to turn back to me, I gave her a little break there because I was explaining something. As she realizes to come back to me, 
um, I'm, I go ahead and release, but it's quick and I just ask for forward again. My main thing, like I said before, is come forward off that rope. So I don't even really have to do much with the whip. When I present it, she immediately thinks back. Well, the good news about what we're doing here is she's going to back herself in a corner. She only backs so far down this lane. Here she's starting to try to run by me. And she just thinks if I can't run backwards, I'll just run by you. You're going to see her kind of try to mow me down a couple times and I'll just kind of step out of the way. And I start to work on backing her up. So to kind of get that fixed, I'll step around her and not get run over and then I'll back her up and then bring her forward and back her up. And it just helps make sure I've got that back up. So we'll just come back up here and try again. I stay facing her because she's just so quick to kind of pull rear up and whirl around or whatever she's going to try to pull. She's so quick at it. So here I'm just trying to get her to back and she locks up. So there's a lot of little releases in that backing you may not see, but there's a lot of communication going on. And that's a big reason you're going to see her progress quickly. Now she's about to go backwards again here in a minute, which is part of that's part of the good part of this footage. Here she doesn't understand the backing as well, so she kind of locks up. So I'm going to rock my hand back and forth and make that uncomfortable. As she backs, you'll see my hand get quiet. Best thing to watch here is my left hand working on that. And, and as soon as she starts to back, it really quiets and softens. I'm going to pet her and reward that stepping down. She'll start to understand what that means. And then when we go to the trailer, she'll be able to use that. I'll just start again. So she needs a lot of practice at this. One reason is we're just representing what she doesn't want to do. She doesn't want to come off of that. So here I'll step to the side and then I'll start to present my whip here and ask her. And like I said, I don't even have to tap her with it very much or at all sometimes. Get that nose back. I was a little late there to get that nose. So I had to drop my whip, pick it up, start again. There she tried again. And I don't mind how far she backs up. I just need to keep that nose. And she bumped her butt into that gate, but she's starting to figure out jumping up in the air is not working. There, she tried to run me over. I just did a little bit of an ole move and stepped out of the way and then go went ahead and disengaged her. It's not anything we've worked on or used. I'm sure somebody's done some groundwork with her because I have heard she has a few rides on her. Uh, there she runs by again runs by again. I'm just working on backing now. I mean, I need her to face me and kind of back up a little bit. And she's just fighting it. This is really more or less a temper tantrum to me. I'm just trying to stay in there with good timing and feel, but also get a few things accomplished. Get her following that rope. There we go. Back her up a little bit. Pet her. I mean, I'm going to reward her when I can. Here, I'll step in front of her and block that way because I knew she wasn't going to run by me, so I felt like I could use my body to stop her. You need to be really cautious doing that. If you're not sure, then I wouldn't step in front of one, but I pretty well knew she was ready to stop. She was prepared enough to do it. Here, we're fighting again. See, as soon as her feet hit the ground, she kind of put slack in that rope. I left it there. I didn't keep pulling there now she's getting a little close there so i go ahead and back her up kind of bump her back off that lead rope i don't stay facing horses this often but you can just tell she's just not the safest horse to be around i think she'd step on me on accident just because she just is so uneducated honestly she just doesn't lead well that's why she doesn't load well so we just check that back up make sure it's there and after working through all that, she's starting to say, okay, I kind of get it. And she's understanding to come forward off that rope, stay relaxed, and then back up. So there she's licking and chewing. I believe this time she just kind of gets it, knows what the deal is, slows down. But when I pull on the rope, she comes forward. And I, I'm pretty happy with this. So uh, we make sure we can get her backed off this pretty good. This is all pretty good for me in order to go and move on to the trailer so i go ahead and have my cameraman um move and we go ahead and start from the round pen head out to the trailer now if i hadn't used that space i was just using i might have lost her out in this big space so you can see she's not really connected to me um walked up to the trailer pretty good considering the owner said you couldn't even get her near one and even the one one of the ones she'd been tried to load in was a stock trailer. So there, I'm just holding. I'm not pulling very hard. I just want to give her a chance to come forward. 
We're definitely in the teaching stage of this. We're just gonna pick up and hold. If nothing happens, we'll start to use our whip just a little. Let her smell that trailer. I'm gonna take the slack out again. Release, take it out again. And I'm looking for her to lean forward, step forward, smelling. I'll give her little breaks and then I'll go right back to asking. When her nose leaves that trailer and she looks out, I'm gonna ask her forward again. I'm not gonna let her attention leave the trailer. I'll leave her alone a lot when she is looking in the trailer. <clears throat> there she had to rear again a little, but we're just not gonna worry about that. We're just gonna keep working at this and keep rewarding her thoughts and her body heading towards this trailer. And I only want her half in right here, and you can see the rope's really slack, but she just went ahead and climbed in. And I kind of laughed about it at the time, and I felt pretty confident I could get her backed out, so <clears throat> we just went ahead and backed her out. And you know, all that work we already did is what caused that to go as smoothly as it did. Now, a horse, the first time I take him away from the trailer, I don't really like to get I don't like to have them between me and the trailer. So I kind of weave her away and do it in a way that I can stay between her and the trailer. And then you kind of see her attention's elsewhere and she wants to lean into me. This is part of not having good uh, groundwork foundation, not yielding away from me well, treating me like I'm the mare and she's the foal and she's gonna spook at the world and run me over. Here we go with our next attempt at the trailer. She's pawing. I don't really let them paw the trailer that much. I'll just make it a little uncomfortable. I'll start, I'll put a little life in that lead rope. And if they're pawing it, I just kind of ask them to come forward. And uh, I've had good luck with that. There she climbs in all the way again. And like I said, as we progress this, we'll stop her halfway in, back her out. We'll back her halfway and pull her back, back her halfway out, pull her back in. We'll do quite a few things to get her pretty good. But, you know, for a second attempt, that's pretty good. And think we might only do three attempts so you can see even here I'm just kind of having to put my hand up and keep her off me because she'd just like to spook at anything else and run me over so I just pick up that rope and get her attention back on me she gives me some good space so give her just a little rest here and then we're going to get right back to it and this is going to be the finish right here we're just going to have her walk in and uh, I'm pretty happy with where she ends up here and we'll just come back again tomorrow i mean we've already done quite a bit of fly spray stuff she stalled there but she sure enough went in so that's kind of the end of the trailer loading and you know she made a lot of progress and i'm pretty happy with her there but you can see some of the little stuff we ran into so hope that helps some of you guys out and good luck with your horses